<laughs> it's hilarious. What's up, Peach? <laughs> <laughs> we're getting a good laugh here because we thought we were live, folks, and we have been talking behind the scenes for about four <laughs> We haven't five been minutes. live this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good little dialogue. Hey, guys, I'm, I'm sorry that you guys missed it. The show's over now. But yeah, hey, yeah we, we already went through all day. We got through the whole topic and everything. Wow. James, James, look, man, I saw your comment over under 7 Eleven. Look, it wasn't our fault the first time. All right. It was not our fault the first time we logged or in the second it was time. initializing circle of death. It was crazy. But what's hey, hilarious is that what's hilarious is that I'm like literally on here right now and it's still showing me that we're not live yet. Are you serious? Oh, there we go. Well, we, got we got comments, live comments now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we're getting there we go. In. I'm telling you, NCAA so, is trying to hold us down. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, we're going to talk about Super Leagues, man. And so, look, con. man, yeah, look, it's the NCAA. They don't like us right now because we're about to get all in that gravy today. But, folks, man, look, like, comment, subscribe, share to this channel. Wipe your feet before you come in my damn house, man. Hit that like button, folks. Um, you guys have been with us for what about seven eight months now um so please go and subscribe to the channel this is going to be very live especially during the sec season this year man i cannot wait to season starts we're gonna have a lot to talk about but sorry folks that we couldn't get to you guys over the last three weeks steven and jay were doing their thing in vegas uh you know with their jobs quote unquote working i saw jay on twitter in front of a bunch of screens uh looks like he was Maybe throwing a few dollars at some games. Um, working hard. Or something. He was working hard. Working hard and lost a lot of money. So, yes, I did. Yeah. Definitely worked very hard. It was very terrible. Exactly. <laughs> I was out of country for a couple of weeks, Thailand and also the Philippines, doing Air Force stuff. I was working hard, folks. I promise you I was working hard and shopping a lot, too, as well. Um, so, you know, and Chris is always late. So, we don't know when Chris is coming in, but he'll probably be around here about 720 ish because that's how Chris rolls. Um, and he won't be late because that's how Chris rolls. And Ty, he just holds it down all the time. You're going to catch Ty streaming every day of the week, everywhere, because he's that guy. Unfortunately, fellas, I am everywhere right now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fellas, how's it going, man? What's going on? Happy to be back, guys. Happy for the uh, family family therapy session. It's been too long. <laughs> exactly, man, exactly. So, look, we got some good comments coming in right now. Uh, you know, it's Larry Hillman, hey, Nino, and everybody, what's going on? Uh, Steven. Oh, yeah, Steven. Here you go. Chat is not open. There we go, Steven. Yep, that's my dude. Texas baby from Nate. Uh, Derek Wisner. If you guys know who Derek Wisner is, that's Trey Wisner's uncle, if I'm not mistaken. Trey Wisner that's is awesome. the running back at Texas, and Derek's been nice. a fan of pretty much all of our channels here for a while. He's really good on the comments, man. And Trey's going to be a bad boy this year, man. He was starting to unleash himself on special teams last year. I'm not going to get into that Texas talk. It's going to piss off Jay a little bit, but we're going to talk about them Texas. Oh, you know, I don't hurt my feelings, talk about them man. Texas I'm a football boys, fan. Trey is Let's going go. to be a beast. No doubt about that. No doubt about Let's that. Let's go, baby. You know I'm a football fan. I love it. Oh, man. But look here, man. Today is going to be about them Super Leagues, man. We're going to talk about the comments that just surfaced up today. We're going to talk about the Super Leagues and just – what does that mean for college football? Let me share something on my screen here, folks. Um, let's take a look at, ooh, get out of there. Bam, there's a comment here. It says that the current uh, CST, which stands for what, guys? Um, what, the Super Team League, a college super college team super outline? Team. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to create a system that would have up to 70 programs, all members of the five former major conferences, plus Notre Dame and new ACC member SMU as permanent members and encompass all 130-plus FBS universities. The members would be in a seven team, and I'm sorry, seven, 10 team division joined by an eight division of teams that will be promoted from the second tier. The 50 plus second division teams would have the opportunity to compete their way into the upper division, creating a promotion system similar to the structure in the European football leagues. The 70 permanent members uh, would never be in danger of moving down while the second division would have the incentive of promotion and relegation. So, folks, all this stuff means is we might be getting Super League soon, folks. Hey, man, let me push in on that. So th this is what got my attention. I've been looking at the article from The Athletic before we started. And I, that's why I shot the text and said we've got to talk about this because what's fascinating about this is, is the fact that there's potential for regulation or deregulation for, like, these lower-tier teams. So your upper, team, upper teams, it's going to be there like they always are. But the lower tier have an opportunity to expand those divisions and then if they don't perform, they get sent their butts right back down. Man, could you imagine like Vanderbilt being kicked out of the SEC? And Auburn, bring up like Auburn. Auburn. Oh wow. How they the sent SEC Auburn down. 
Dude. And then they bring up Boston College or Dude, something like that, man. That? that would be just some hilarious. Could you like Rutgers being kicked out of like right. <laughs> Rutgers kicked out of the Big Ten. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that? I mean, think about this oh, shit man. for a minute, man. What's a Big that Ten would team be that sucks? Well, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to say sucks. Okay, I don't want to say sucks. That's just so harsh for me to say. But I mean, Northwestern. Yeah, like, could you imagine, like, Northwestern being kicked out of the Big Ten? Uh, you. I mean, Ooh, yeah. yeah I mean, Iowa. He beat, he beat me to it. No, I was going to say, like, yeah, Iowa always has a good defense, but, like, can we kick them out simply because they're in Because of their of offense? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I, sign me up for that. I mean, IU, great example there. Yeah, ACC. I mean, look at some teams in the ACC, man. Ooh, you know what I mean? Like, ACC. Ooh, I mean, Take ACC would, dude. Ooh, there's a lot of teams in the ACC that wouldn't. That wouldn't survive. <laughs> <No, laughs> that would get fully deregulated. Like, in a sorry, heartbeat. Georgia Tech. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, sorry, Georgia Tech. <laughs> Bye, John you know? Tech. We understand that you're really good at uh, mathematics, but we're going to kick you schmooze out of this. Be a public IV and, and go compete right. with MIT. <laughs> right. Go compete with MIT. We're going to go ahead and send you about your way. But no, that's a yeah, that's another one to consider. It's it's just fascinating that the idea is there. Now, is it going to happen? Probably not. But I think within the next five to 10 years, something has to change around college football. It truly cannot be sustainable that it's going to be SEC and Big Ten basically running everything, with the other two conferences complaining nonstop. Yeah. Something has to change. Um, even though, you know, in the SEC and, you know, and granted the Big Ten, it just means more than everybody else. Something's got to change. So I'm curious to see what that what that looks like within the next five to 10 years. And I think this idea is a good one. that's going to start sparking true conversation because these are people that actually have money that can make this happen. Yeah. This isn't just, uh, you know, us dreaming stuff out there and, you know, you know, theory casting. This is like people with bread that can say, we're going to, these are sports executives that saying, look, there's a way that we can, there's an avenue we can actually pull this off. And then players getting collectively bargained. Whew. So I guess my question is, this is why we need Chris in the show today, because he's a lawyer. If this happens for only football, how does the funding work when all this comes in? Because the funding for football at these big schools, the Bamas, the Texases, the Oklahomas, mm -hmm. the Michigans, Ohio States, the, the football funding funds pretty much a majority of the shit that goes on at these schools, man. Where I can answer that. Buildings. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I can answer that one. That was easy. Now, when it comes to the buildings, unless it's like athletic facilities, of course, you know, your buildings mainly come from donors that donate to the actual school itself, which mm -hmm. is also a very fascinating conversation because right now there's a battle internally at every single school between NIL and fundraising for the actual I, school itself. I don't itself, know how much of a battle is, as it is because old Mrs. AD straight up came out and said, these kids don't give a darn about any of the facilities. We're putting all of our money towards NIL. Exactly. Very, very fair point. But that's the thing about it. Those people that work in the fundraising departments to get donors to donate towards buildings and stuff for like academics wise, they're fighting in the, in, in a lot of these bigger conferences yeah. because like you said, they're throwing their, there's like, I'd rather the older generation are like, I want to see my team compete for a title. Some of the younger money makers are kind of a combination of both. I want to put my name on a building, but also I would like my football team or basketball team to be good. So it's a combination of those two. But to answer your question, you know, how does that work for the others? It's very easy. You have to license those schools for them to play in the uh, Super League. So, for example, as the revenue comes in, in order for Oklahoma or a Texas or Alabama to have a quote unquote team in the Super League, you're going to have to license that their logo and everything from the school into that Super League team because Super League team is going to be separate. So that's a great way to get that money yeah. back into the schools to fund those sports that are, you know, your Olympic sports that don't bring in revenue. Yeah. A whole license model. Somebody else mentioned, I think it was Chip Kelly that mentioned that a long time ago about how that makes sense. But that's probably the most genius way to do it. Just make them license it. Well, then those sports don't go away. And I think that the theme of this conversation, right, because this is the newest idea that has come about, but gentlemen, just two weeks ago or three weeks ago, the Big Ten and the SEC are openly kind of having conversations about completely mm -hmm. pulling out of the NCAA. Yeah. Because we've gotten to a point where the NCAA can police 
nothing. For instance, the NCAA tried to maintain that one-time transfer rule. A judge in West Virginia put in an injunction saying you can't police how many times they transfer. That violates antitrust. The NCAA laid down and said, okay, why? Because there's five active court cases, four of which coming on the docket in 2025, dismantling the NCAA's antitrust structure. The reason why I think this is so notable is the bottom line here is that it's no more NCAA. Now, what does that look like? One yeah. of the interesting things I saw in this <laughs> was the notion that, like, yeah, we'll still do NIL, but it's not going to be as it is right now. We're going to do revenue sharing. And I know that there are some people that when you say that, they're like, oh, well, we, why would you do that? Because all the players will end up making more money, mm -hmm. right? This is the thing that I loved whenever like we were talking about this the last time. This is what Saban said. Saban on Capitol Hill was like, we need to – continue with NIL, but we need to do NIL as it was meant to be. If Gatorade wants to come and sponsor a kid, let Gatorade come and sponsor a kid. But why don't we do revenue sharing? That way, everybody gets a piece of the pie. Everybody gets money. Because right now, you have your Bryce Youngs or your Quinn Ewers making so much money, but there's a cat on that Alabama or Texas roster that's making crumbs as comparatively to some of these other guys. You still get to create value for yourself through NIL, but then you would also have the access through revenue sharing. And that I find really intriguing. I, I don't know how they would do it, but I'm really interested in like how they would structure the payments, how they would structure the relegation, all of that. It, it's going to be fun to see. It's going to be interesting, you know, because if they do do something like that, man, where, you know, it's just sharing, right, of uh, all the funds, right? So if that happens and there's revenue sharing going on, there's going to have to be something like a damn near like a salary cap, right? But if there's a salary cap, all schools aren't created equal, right? So um, I don't want to say the South Carolina is not going to bring in the money that Bama's going to bring in, right? Not, so, so, but so we, how does we that see work? that in the NFL well, already. Yeah. Dallas well, right. Cowboys are the most valuable franchise in the world, yet somehow the Green Bay Packers, which are publicly owned, are still operating on a consistent basis, even though the outside revenues look at the Raiders. The the yeah. Raiders, the most cash poor team in the NFL, are still afloat easily, even though the brand is still strong. Yeah. They don't make no money because they were in, you know, for Oakland for so long. Now they're in Las Vegas. So, but no, I think to your point, uh, you know, what you're kind of pointing out is well, once you start collectively bargaining, it's going to be everybody's putting off. It's this is when socialism comes into play, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically, everybody's going to share from the big pot of money that comes in, and then they divvy it up equally. And unfortunately, Ooh. there's nothing you can do as the big schools. You're not going to be able to negotiate getting a larger piece of that pie so if you're is, going into a bigger league combined. So all, right, all right, so this is my thing when it comes to the big schools, right? Is... Is a Texas, is a Bama, is a Tennessee, is a is a um a Michigan, is an Ohio State, are they going to want to fund Wisconsin? Probably not, unfortunately. I, and I'm so, no, they're not it's going idealistic, to idealistic, my idea, but you're right. Right, right. They're not gonna want to, but they're gonna not unless they decide to branch off into a super big league and then a small, a minor league. I think I they're think, not going to have a choice if they're going to want to play football. I think that's going to be a hiccup in there because I like I can't right. see teams getting all this revenue and then saying, "No, people are coming to see uh, Alabama play Vanderbilt. They're not coming to see Vanderbilt, right?" So you're right. Yeah, you know. So I right. am going to, you know, if that happens and I put it in a big pot, is this going to be like the PBC with boxing where? You know, Tank Davis gets ninety percent of the lion's share, and whoever he fights gets ten percent. Right? No, <laughs> it'll no, it'll be it'll be like the NFL model. That, that's exactly what's going to set up for me. So, um, or if you can look at the NBA, like look at your small models, your small market teams, Oklahoma City's, your Charlotte's, yeah. your San Antonio's, they still get the equal amount of the pie, even when they're in their down years, right? Because that's just your salary cap is based upon how much money is coming in as an organization, but not individual teams, just organizationally, yeah. right? That's where your uh, your salary cap comes into play. If we're bringing in a billion dollars this year, we divvy it up amount all these teams, you can spend no more than this amount for your player. That's where your caps come to play. That's kind of where your negotiational piece is going to come in. It's I think the good thing for them is it's a lot easier because you're only dealing with like four years, right? If you make it to where there's no red shirt and it's only your four years of play, eliminating 
um, all the extra years. You won't deal with what the NFL has where they have a bunch of dead years on the back end of contract. Cap, You've got four Sorry, years and your butt's out. So right. Uh, all right. So this is my thing, right? So is it when you're talking about the money going into one pot? Are we talking about the money made from the actual games? Are we talking about donor money? TV. Like TV money's most TV you typically revenue. NFL, NBA, the way they're in MLB, the way they do theirs is they have the big national TV contract. Well, MLB doesn't, they do regional stuff, but they have the big national TV contracts. And from that, and anything the league makes is what goes into the pot for the cap. Now okay. the and the teams like t- ticket money and stuff goes to them. You okay, can do whatever so, you want to with that. All right, all right, so this makes sense. So when you're looking at the revenue share piece, this is to guarantee that every player in college football gets the same amount, basically. So yes, separate of NIL. So let's say, for instance, the revenue share would say every player in college football gets 50 grand a year. Or, right? yes. like, yeah. or it's one of those things like the NFL where each team is given – Ten million dollars, and they say, "Do with this what I've you will." Oh, if no. if your quarterback now, I, I don't the know the answer th- to that. Oh, I, that's that's, that's a great question. You know, that's that a fantastic. But, but that's where the free market comes in. The question, free market wise, is what is a quarterback worth to you? But right, think, and then the market oh, sets man. itself. Okay, all right. So this is this is the problem that I'm getting hung up on. Right, mm-hmm. if we're going to revenue share and we're going to mandate that all the teams get equal share, right? And since we're now essentially, if this happens, we're going to be making college football a minor league for football, basically. I would, I would want to kind of keep it simple, right? This would be my thing. I think the revenue share should be that every kid gets equal amount. NIL per school separately is where these kids are going to make their money. Like that's that's where your your Bryce Young comes in and hits him across the head for one point five, right? Or um, you might get a two-star kid like a guy like at Texas, you know, Foreman, right? He ended up becoming the Doak Walker, you know, winner. He was a two-star coming in, you know, college. Uh, so, of course, he wasn't going to make the money coming out of high school in the college because his his star ranking wasn't that large, right? Uh, so everybody revenue shares gets their 50 grand, but this gives them an opportunity to where NIL, he's able to pick it up and make some real bread, um, you know, if he actually performs – at the level of which he thinks he should be performing. Steve, what you well, think? Was, you kind of quiet today, man. Yeah, Steven, I know. No, he over here <laughs> quiet and stuff. Look on modulate. He's quiet right good. now. You watching Spurs or something? No, I've been listening to this uh, <laughs> awesome conversation. I think it's funny, the the article and everything that's come up, because it's literally ex- almost to a T what I suggested a couple months, like what, maybe our last show or the show before. Mm-hmm. Literally mm-hmm. what I explained. And yeah. now we're seeing like people running with this idea, but I don't have money to sh- to, to to actually fund it <laughs> like these guys. You sure, but no, but we can make sure was, you get your due credit. We'll all we'll all know, riot. Somebody was. Well, the I Godfather. stole a lot of my stuff from Chip Kelly, so to be fair, but that, I, I thought it was Chip that said, was talking about that similar. Lot, yeah, but I I had some alterations in there from from what Chip said. But I I mean I hear what you guys are saying in terms of revenue split and TV dollars split, but. I mean, to the point about, you know, will Texas fund Wisconsin or anything like that? I mean, how does it work today in terms of us in the SEC? I mean, don't they still have to, isn't there some sort of negotiation of what each team gets with the TV deal or like, what does that, I don't know how different that would be in terms of sharing what it is today versus well, revenue TV money revenue. Is, is well, the TV point. revenue money today in the conferences is split between each school. So they all get an equal share. Right. So Vanderbilt gets the same thing that you get from an uh, that Alabama would get. So then you know, why would and, they be pissed off in the new model? Yeah, okay. It's, it's a saying? fair point. Yeah, that's what you're saying now. <sighs> and, well, I think what you were thinking about, Nino, is that like Texas having a hundred thousand uh, state uh, seat stadium, would they have to share their gate money with yeah, a Vanderbilt who has like thinking. thirty thousand, or Missouri who has thirty five thousand? No, because it was all going to one pot, right? But exactly. If it's that's just a TV not revenue, Missouri it's stadium the same stuff. only holds thirty five. Well, no, Baylor only holds like forty. Yeah, I think Missouri holds like sixty. They're very small. They're they're very small. Yeah, stadium. They're, they're one of the smaller stadiums in the conference. 
to the TV stuff anyway because it's these are multi billion dollar contracts. There's mm-hmm. tons, there's tons and tons and tons of money, but all the other individual school stuff, you know, I, I think that would probably remain what it is right now. There's a reason why certain schools generate more profit Mm -hmm. than others right and so there's a whole bunch of ancillary things that you know uh, that generate money that texas may do or alabama may do that missouri or another school may not right and and tickets being part of that so i'm not too concerned about that i mean i i've always said they need to break away my thing is in that in this model are you know are we are we gonna go to you know what did the divisions look like yeah. right you know they're talking about seven leagues I, I i would hope that we get to a place where things are a little bit more localized and you know we can eliminate maryland and ucla being in the same conference and nonsense <laughs> like that i mean just that doesn't even make sense at a professional level it doesn't now, that's the thing that's now, bothered me most about real realignment has been that we're losing a lot of the regional stuff that actually has meaning as far as like hate and stuff. But one thing that I can say, me. this is one thing that could actually benefit from this, right? You know, but hold on, folks. First off, Sharpshooters Podcast, he's the homie. Go check him out. Really good content, man. Um, he's a Bama fan, but you know, it's all Brinsky. good. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Brinsky? He talks, about, anyways. he talks about a lot of good stuff, man. And he's a music lover too. So if you love music, man, Sharp's gonna definitely, you know, like talk some good music stuff with you, man. So shout out to Brinsky, man. But one thing I can say, guys, just to kind of counter about the, like the localized um, you know, teams and stuff, right? What has been the main thing that these kids have said when they are getting recruited out of Texas, Georgia, Alabama? Um, or just kids across the country, they want to come play where because that's where all the talent's at. They want to go play no, in the no, SEC, right? Yeah, um, yeah, so yeah. I guess one counter to that is if we if if the teams um, weren't all localized and where you had only the SEC teams like the from Texas over to Florida, right, playing each other, if they did have people in different spots playing each other, then it could possibly spread the wealth of talent across the nation and not be so localized in the South. That's my only count. I don't think it's right. I like having the teams together because I like seeing Texas and OU and Texas A&M play. I love seeing Auburn and Alabama play. I want to see Florida and Miami, Florida, you know, Florida State play. I want to see those games. But I guess my only counter would be that, yes, if there was a conference and, then, and you had seven leagues and one of those leagues had, uh, let's say, USC, Ohio State, Florida, um, Wisconsin, and Maryland. Guess, look, I know the travel is going to be stupid, ridiculous for that, right? But if we're, but if it's if it's a semi pro league now, right? I mean, if it's semi pro, you know, like, kind of is what it is at that point, right? But Stephen, I'm with you. I like to localize games, but I'm, yeah, I'm just thinking I mean, outside he- the box here. What do we, I mean, come on. I mean, and maybe, maybe it's, this is my East coast bias now talking because I grew up on, I grew up in DC. (laughs) I'm like football exists everywhere. Right. And I understand that there's more centralized areas of this country that care more and generate more and and kids want to play in certain areas. But I, I grew up in a time where Miami and Florida state mattered. Right. And, and some of these things freaking mattered. And if there's, if there's a way to make those things matter and, and encourage that even monetarily so that those schools can keep their kids or even Penn State on the East Coast. Some of the reasons why we've lost these regional rivalries is because of realignment had been taking place. Maryland going to the Big Ten, for example, was terrible for all of their rivalries. And it's it's like there's a sense of apathy that set into a, a program that's very, very big and has a lot of money, but they're, they don't care about playing Iowa. They care about playing, you know, Virginia and, and the teams that are in the ACC and so forth. I mean, West Virginia and Pittsburgh used to be, they, those are teams that should be together for, right. for, for, you know, if we care about the sport, but if we just care, if we're just here to make money and that's the only thing that matters, then 
you know, let let's roll with creating these conferences however it needs to be to or, make the most money. Or maybe you keep those rivalries. And so now there's opportunity for Pitt and West Virginia to play now because they they will be in the same league. Uh, but you would still have a little bit of regional overlap, you know, from like region to region, you know, like, uh, you know, the Cowboys go play the Patriots and the cow, you know, but that's kind of like your preseason, right? You know, you know, for college football, those first three or four games, you kind of go play other teams, but usually those teams are still local, you know? So like, for instance, uh, Bama played South Florida, South Florida's not far from Bama. Right. I mean, it's, 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 it's not that far. Texas plays UTSA. Um, but you do get that one big game out, right? So Texas plays Alabama this year, you know, but to be honest with you, that's still the South, right? And they're two big brands that's different. But Texas goes to the big house and they play Michigan next year, right? Um, and then you got where Bama played USC, right? And so you get those those big matches, but I can see those for like the first four games, right? Where you you kind of go out of the out of the league, out of the conference, almost like the NFL does, where Cowboys play Patriots or you know, 49ers go and play um the Jets, right? So it just happens, right? But I don't know. This very interesting. I just man. don't want a scenario where, because we're we're already headed here. Yeah, where you're asking college kids to travel. That's more what I was about NFL. to say. You're asking them to travel more than the professional guys, and the professional guys don't have to go to class. Right, like and, and that's getting they, paid. That's like more one. Students. Yeah, that's one. And then you're also asking your fan base, which is comprised of a lot of students that are in that's school true. that build the pride. They can't afford the USC kids. I mean, it's as rich as a lot of them probably are. It's going to be tough for them to make it to Maryland on a but, consistent basis. And but Penn nine State. times out of 10, though, I mean, honestly, though, let's look at this. Broke college kid road trip. And that was the best part about being a college kid. You could road trip up to, yeah, I mean, being but, in, think about it in the Big 12, right? It's like, like for Texas, like, you could roll yeah, down the street. That was when McDoubles were a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot harder to budget when that damn McChicken is three bucks now, four bucks now. That that really throws a wrench in it. Damn, five guys is twenty five dollars a person I mean, now. What the hell is going on with five guys? Should. The average yeah. fan has already been priced out of an. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The regular season period. You're probably right. Every every oh, every game that I've been to for Texas away, where there was Texas at Maryland or Texas at West Virginia or Texas at Bama, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, look who look who rose in the equation right now. Oh my God. Look at this guy. Late as usual, but always on time. Our brother from another Chris with a mother freaking hey, K. Look, man. I just got <laughs> off of work, man. Nah, we know we saw good, I saw bro. Steven was on here. I knew Nick was up to his usual uh oh, excuse me. I saw Steven on here. I saw Nick up to his usual foolishness. Texas so I can't leave Ty over that? there to deal with that trash. You see that? Texas. And I can't, I can't leave Jay by himself. So I just had to be here, just as you know, you know, Debo. D, I got, I got to be Debo on here right now. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. You know, but just to talk with uh, you know, like Stephen was saying, the average fan has been priced out of college football. We just had a sports period. You know, just just sports period. You got to have some bread now to go travel to games. When I traveled to go see games, man, I didn't see any college students damn near any any one of the games I went to. Texas versus West Virginia, cheap tickets, no college students. For one thing, it's to travel, of course. But Texas versus Maryland, DC, you know, that's a that's a that's a hall, but you know, kids come up there. Texas versus Bama, you would think more college kids would have been there. No. You yeah. know, those those tickets were outrageous. You know, three, four hundred bucks a ticket. You know, so the average fan has been priced out. But most of those kids go to the home games, right? So if you got 12 games, you got six at home, you know, kids are gonna show out and show loud. And the folks with money, you know, should travel and and fly out and get rental cars to just drive, you know, let me road trip of it. Yeah, that's gonna be a tough part. Is it, I mean, you're 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 you basically priced out all of your fans at that point, right? Unless you're unless you're a high end donor or you just rich with a lot of bread. Like the co- the best part is the college fans being able to uh, to participate, and they not able to do that anymore if you if you make it that way so the way it's going it's getting to that point now now luckily like with OU Texas being in just the south yeah and just basically extending to Arkansas Louisiana all drivable places you can do that but you still miss out on you know some things you know going up the street you know going towards Kansas Kansas State you know making a ride to Iowa State but Having having the way the Big Ten is set up with 2014, why are they still called the Big Ten? 
<laughs> Let's just talk about that part. Can we discuss why? I mean, I understand they're basically the quote unquote big conference, but why are they still the Big Ten? Can we take the ten off of it? Let's get rid of all it. those teams, and they still don't match up to the new SEC. Big two four, baby. Their, Big two four, baby. Is the Legends League and the I forgot. <laughs> what is Bro, the Legends in the in the? Oh man, I forgot. But yeah, it it sucks. But like, it's great for them. But genuinely, I'm not even trying to send a shot. The new SEC with Texas and Oklahoma, like, I mean, come on, man. That yeah. league is so well, that that's going to be so much fun for all of us, right? Like, what a move by the SEC. Yeah, I mean, SEC did the thing. But look here, though, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna counter that too. All right, so let's look at the Big Ten. All right. Uh, well, first off, let's look at um, the the SEC. You got Bama. You got Georgia, uh, you got Oklahoma, you got Texas, you got um, LSU, you got LSU, damn, LSU. Florida, you got Florida, Tennessee. Huh? Tennessee, you got Tennessee. Who else? Ole Miss. We don't have to say anything about A and I'm good with leaving them off. <laughs> I mean, I'm certainly good with leaving Auburn fan off. Fan bases. No, yeah, no, you're right. You're yeah. right. I'm you know, just, so, I'm just. Sending you know, so you got A and M. They're they're a fan base. Ole Miss is huge. I mean, they they're starting to grow. You know, like Ole Miss is starting to get it. Auburn's huge. Auburn. So that's 10 teams, right? That's that's damn. That's 10 out of the 16 right there, right? Okay, I think I think those are the heavy hitters. Those are the heavy hitters, right? Those are the heavy hitter fan base organizations. Now, Big Ten, Michigan, Ohio State, right? Um USC. Yeah, USC. Oregon. Oregon. Washington's, you know, we can say yeah, we great, want to about Washington. Right there. Um, I'm trying to think. Penn State. Huh? Penn oh, State. Penn State, Nebraska. Big fan base, no matter how they've done. True, true. Huge fan base. So that's seven. Who else? Man. To, I, man. Now it starts to drop. It does start to drop pretty quick, too. Well, if we include A and M, you got to include Michigan State. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm actually fine with Michigan State That's because, fine. like, yeah. they, they've got a great basketball <laughs> presence, right? In terms of athletic. <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all laughing like that? Know, man? Chris, Chris, Chris's That's reaction. <laughs> That's Chris, man. Whoa. That's Chris. Like, what are you doing? You get to the <laughs> Illinois, the Northwesterns, the Indianas, the Marylands. Yeah. The Rutgers. Yeah, your Rutgers, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a significant piece of that conference. Do we put UCLA in there? I think I said UCLA. I'm fine with I mean, UCLA in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no. USC, nah, you know, so USC, I didn't put it in there. So that's that's nine teams right there. You're right, man. They got 24 teams right now? Is it 24? Something crazy. How many so is like, it, Jay? I'm going to pull it right I think there. it's 20 right 20? now. So pound it's for pound, the SEC 20. has to... It, it, it is what it is. They got the better teams, pound for pound. Well, and then even if we're like ranking those, like fair play to Michigan, great season, no doubt about it. Um, gonna be fun to see what they look like next year. Y'all have a great game going up there. That that I'm so excited I'm, I'm for, excited for Texas. Um, I would love to go to that game to be honest with you. Gosh, man, that. you that should. Answers, that answers a couple of questions about both teams early on uh, in the season, as far as, I mean, really for both seasons, I mean, for both teams. So I'm, I'm excited about that game too. And Ohio state, like they're going to be an interesting team, but if, I think if we're doing like the real heavy hitters, I think even then, like the sec is still more top heavy in between yeah, Texas, yeah. Oklahoma, Bama, Georgia, LSU right there. I mean, those teams right there are going to take, like take your pick, OSU versus Michigan and against all those, and it's it's oh, it's an absolute dogfight. OU and Texas going to the big going to the SEC tip the scale. So now the SEC, yeah, no doubt. Ain't not in, in my book, and you guys know that I've criticized the SEC uh, for being top heavy for a lot of times. But now with OU and Texas being there, I don't think you can say that anymore because I think that with the current coaches, the current the current regimes that are, are there at each school, I think that that. I don't think OU or Texas expects uh, to have a down season anymore. Um, with, I mean, with what the SEC what we schools have would have. Fair point. You know, Big I like to. The... What's going on, Jay? Jay, Jay. Auburn hacked him. <laughs> they heard about me trying to relegate them, and they're trying to hold us down. 
Oh, there he is. We're back. There I am. I'm back. I'm back. My bad. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. You know, interwebs acting up. 18 teams. Yeah, 18 teams. I just got it. Got it up. So stupid. Uh, man, look. Travel's going to be stupid for this, man. So what are we Steven, on? Like, So what number are we on now of how many from the big y'all would consider? I think we said nine. So, okay. So we said, uh, look, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Penn State, Michigan State, USC, Nebraska, UCLA, Oregon, uh, Michigan. Washington, and Michigan. Those, that's 10 teams. 10 out of 18. I didn't even throw in Iowa. And I was, you know, they no. No, but Iowa has a legit loyal fan, but but you're right. I will put Iowa, <laughs> I will put Iowa in the same conversation as you know, South you're Carolina about the heavy hitters, or, right? Uh, or a Mizzou, honestly. Yeah, they're not you're talking about the, yeah, that's true. That's true. You're talking heavy about the heavy hitters, right? They're like the second tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say <laughs> good, strong, like heavy tier. hitter to to mid heavy hitter, because some of the teams I list for the SEC, I wouldn't count them as heavy now, hitters. Now, Stephen, Stephen, bag me up on this. Somebody bag me up on this at least. I don't, I don't put. Who who were the last uh, like Michigan State? um hell minnesota um even washington i'm sorry i know it's just recency bias but for a no, long Washington's time they were mediocre that. too i mean it, it's going to it's going to be like a damn ferris wheel out there it's going to be a spin a revolving circle of uh just spitting out one team out of that bunch that is like oh yeah they're good this year and they're sorry this year they're good this year they're sorry this year but washington like always Jets. has this like Go crazy ahead. aspect to get good coaches. I mean, you're talking about yeah, Don do. James, Chris Peterson. Chris Peterson. I mean, and then listen, I, the I, I know I'm, yeah, uh, I was going to throw it out there. I didn't know if like he, it was so short, but he was nah, so successful. Still, like shit, when he went he to the playoffs. He went to, I mean, Natty, yeah. I yeah. Mean, he went to Natty, you know, they get, they get great coaches. Yeah. That's nah, and, I, and I get that, but I'm just saying like, it's not every year that they're consistently putting out 10 win seasons like that. Same with Iowa, same with, uh, Michigan State, same with Iowa, same with a lot of those teams. They're, those teams are the same as if, um, as uh, damn Mississippi State catching lightning in a bottle. Well, now Ole Miss is good. I don't know. I don't know. But if I do that, Washington. I got to take Ole Miss out of the equation. I got to take A and M out of the equation. Mm-hmm. I got to you know, it, like like if I do that, I got to start taking some teams out of the SC because I put Ole Miss in there and I put A and M in there because they got huge fan bases. Um, even though they might not win all the time, they still got huge fan bases and they travel well and they're, they're going to fill a hundred thousand. They're going to spend money. money. Yep. Yep. They're going to spend money. And so that's why I put Michigan state. Cause they do spend money. Michigan state teams spend money. Washington is a wild fan base. If, if you've never been to a Washington game, they are exactly. a wild fan base. They spend and money. They have a na- national presence. There's a lot of Washington fans all over the across place. the country. I worked yeah. with a lot of them in the Pentagon, man. And I, you, you want to talk about guys who are into their football? <laughs> Washington folks who are into their football. But but the rest of those teams in the in the Big Ten again, the IU's, the Illinois, yeah, Purdue, the Minnesotas, Rutgers, the Purdue's, the Northwestern, Rutgers, the Northwesterns. They're they're all in that boat. Maryland right? of what they're doing. Maryland's a sleeping giant because Maryland has all the Under Armour money, and that is true. They have they Maryland can be a giant if they ever took it seriously. No, they do but take right it seriously. Now, the problem is no, is that two, yeah, two his they brother, do. To his little, uh, to his little brother kept getting hurt. His knee, his yeah. knee. No, was they, no, Maryland good. takes no, it seriously. Maryland, I'm talking about Maryland as a as a major program. They do. They do take it seriously. Their biggest problem is is that they also um, are playing in a deficit every single year because of how much they have to spend to travel. They, I think they're the ones that are always negative. And oh. their biggest donor is the dude that owns Under Armour. Like, so you should have money. <laughs> I saw you out there, Coach Smook, with Roll Tide Willie. I saw it. <laughs> I crazy part, though, the man, is... Best. You know, some can be... They could be the organ of the East with all the absolutely, absolutely could be the organ of the East. And they have, they're in a, the most fertile, one of the most fertile yes. recruiting grounds, but they get smoked by Penn State because Joe Pa owned that area for so long. And then, and then, uh, uh, Beamer in, in at Virginia Tech started h- hanging out there, and West Virginia took 
So, but Maryland, if Maryland, when Maryland's right, they have all the bread to do it. They could be as big as they want it to be. So, but it's, you yeah. know, you know, what's so funny about that, Steve, and it's part of the reason why I absolutely agree with you is because my family is from out there in like the the New Kent, Virginia, uh, mm-hmm. Richmond, Virginia area, and I know like you might not see a bunch of five stars coming from Virginia or even well Maryland. I mean Maryland, they they put out the the top Talent. ranked prospects like yeah. they got a lot in maryland pound for pound they're one of the best in the nation yeah it's, it's, it's ridiculous actually yeah. 06 07 florida gators and just took the maryland players off that yeah you got and point, put man. them where they're supposed to be and then i take stefan diggs and, and trayvon diggs and tell them hey y'all Stay are home. staying here in pg county in montgomery county yep yeah, like, <laughs> well, I mean, even then, you got Chris Braswell, you got Shane Lee, you got, I mean, right there, those are two NFL caliber players. Uh, Chris Braswell is going to be a second round guy. Yeah, uh, I mean, there, I've even heard some smoke about first, which is, but great point, man. Maryland is interesting because they have so much talent there and the East Coast. And, and then, Steve, you can speak on this. Washington, D.C., people think it's ju- – they got some wild players in the District of Columbia. Now, let me tell you what. Yes. Yes. Caleb Williams. Yeah. yeah. Look, yeah. look, look. Guys, for those who don't know, the CAC conference, the Catholic League conference there in Washington, D.C. Stupid. In the DMV area between Gonzaga, Good Ooh. Council, DeMatha, St. John's. Yeah. Uh, 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 Bishop McNamara, these are these are people that have produced NFL, NBA talent over the last 30, 40 years. Some of the biggest names you can think of have come from those. They are all in one league. They all play each other every year in one league. That's why when Caleb Williams won that league as a sophomore in high school, he ascended automatically. It's like, we don't need to see anymore because he was doing it against future NFL players. Mm-hmm. It's like that DMB Trinity man. League out there in California. It's crazy league. It's straight stupid, man. Dumb. You know, even, you know, just to bring it back, man, you know, basketball in 2006, you know, Texas gets a guy from that Maryland area by the name of Kevin Durant. You know, a lot of people were wondering, yeah. how he, you know, like how come he didn't go to Georgetown or, or somewhere in the area? Or even go up to like New York and go to Syracuse or go to Mar- I mean, just I mean, well, what if yeah, I told there's you a lot of talent in my area. Beasley dude. were not only from the they were from the same freaking block, yeah. right? Yeah, and then uh, Taiwan Lawson, who that because they're my they were all the same age. Taiwan Lawson who ends up becoming the national championship point guard at North Carolina. Yep, Lawson man. Yeah, like, so many of that's them. all from one one like zip. No, nah, that, that DMV area is crazy. It's, it's stupid sick, dude. It's stupid sick. They yeah. they put some hoopers out, Whoa. they put some some ballers. I mean they, they, they it it's just crazy. It's crazy. It is. But Pooh, what you leave. doing in uh, South Korea? It's crazy. I know what's up, Pooh. You is in the military? It, I love his profile. Is it Oak Hill out there in Virginia? Oak Hill's in Virginia, yes. Virginia, yeah. but yeah, but Oak it's Hill's in like South, Mount Wilson. Right? Okay, so it's not in a DMV area. It's not, though. A, it's not technically no. DMV. But no, it's, no, it's not DMV. DMV players. Yeah, they got a lot of. Them. <laughs> <laughs> so it might as well be, yeah. Let's be real. It's, it's, it's the DMV All Star team. <laughs> hey, uh, like, wasn't uh, like wasn't Zeus from there? Uh, Jay, wasn't Zeus from there? Trent, Will- Trent Williams, yeah. No, 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 no. Zeus talking about. Um, Come on. Or not Orlando Brown. Orlando Brown, yeah, he was from uh, he was from that DC area, wasn't he? I think he is from the DC. He, he is, is from Baltimore. DC? He's is from he Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. Ba- Baltimore. Orlando Brown Jr. Hey, is Baltimore. Baltimore. Baltimore is not a part of the DMV. Yeah, it's, it's uh, not a part of DMV. Uh, uh, yeah, because well, because if it was, if it was <laughs> Baltimore, yeah, but it wouldn't be fair. <laughs> well, but but this is the crazy part to back up Steve's original point about Maryland is if you did include Baltimore, you got St. Francis out at Baltimore Ooh, and right. they yeah. pump out talent. Like hey, yeah, St. Yeah. Francis is Who was the defensive end that you guys got from St. Francis? Ty? Braswell. Braswell, sure was. And then yeah. Shane Lee. He was yeah. the uh, – and then if I look at St. Francis right now, they have the number 96 player in the nation, uh, cornerback. Right, yeah. and I'm sure if I kept going through, I'd find even more. They've got another guy, a four star, a cornerback, so two four star cornerbacks. Um, let me keep going down. I mean, already. Hold on. You know what though? Wasn't the running back from Michigan? He, you know, so he was there too as well. 
Remember he transferred so. up there. Um, because he's he's from either Virginia or West Virginia. He transferred up to St. Francis oh, and played man. um you know, so Blake Shit. Corum. Angel Blake Corum. Reese came from St. Francis. Yeah. Did yep. she? Angel Reese sure did. Yes, yes. Angel Reese is from Baltimore. Yes, yes. Sure I'm did. not I'm not from super Maryland. versed in basketball. That's that's yes. wild. No, that's crazy. Sure. More. Just Corum that's how much too. talent is out there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a little bit different because St. Francis kind of recruits their folks, man. They go kind of they go kind of yeah, like East Coast wide, right? Her and her cousin, who was a lottery pick to the New Orleans Pelicans last year, won a, a national championship. Jordan, or yeah, Jordan Hopkins. Yep. They they are all from that area. They're both Baltimore yep. kids. Man. Yeah. That's- hey, so Blake Corm is from Marshall, Virginia, and but you know I remember seeing a special on him. He went to St. Francis for a senior year. Virginia's got crazy running backs. That's the one thing yeah. I will say. Yes. Like Travion Henderson, Blake, Co- like they got crazy. Run- I'll never forget Travion Henderson's high school highlights, and he was playing on this a field that, I mean, granted, we, we're we've gotten used to this Southern high school football, right? We go to Plano East Stadium, and it's a sixty-three million dollar stadium. They're yeah. playing on like a dusty field, and it was so funny because Travion Henderson had a cloud of dust behind him, and he was just gone. God, he was talented. Yeah, I mean, oh, my and, and the, that area we produce a variety. It's it's really athletes, like, and it's athletes whether it's at a freakish defensive end, freakish yeah, running backs, true. you know, just they're freaks. Whereas an area like Georgia is yeah. so rich in the big guys, in the yeah. big quarterbacks, in in power, and. And that area of the country is fascinating <laughs> to me because they produce that in mass like nobody else does. Yeah. And per capita, I would say right now. Hey, it's Ty. fascinating, you know, how those how these things play out regionally. Yeah. Hey, Ty, who was the defensive lineman for Bama that came from Woodbridge, Virginia? Um, he was first round pick. It wasn't um I wasn't no boy say, from the Jets, is it? Wasn't I want Williams, to say it's it? Quentin Williams. Yeah, he came from Woodbridge, man. Um Shit, no, he's from Birmingham. So no, it, it Birmingham. was someone who played. He, and, oh man, he's a first round pick to a few years ago. Um, South Carolina's last two uh, top what top five players or top five star recruits are all were both DMV kids, and yeah. they both came from the Catholic League. And then the, and then they took another kid from PG. So I guess Stephen, if we had the this this super league. And model, do you think that would help entice players in that region to to stay in that area? I would hope, man. I've always, that, I, that's one thing I've always wanted to just see it. Yeah, yeah just point. to see it. What 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 if what if what if all these dudes just said we'll stay, we'll pick a school, <laughs> but and yeah, just honestly, and just load up at one spot, man. Right, instead of being mercenaries at other places like Percy Harvin, those, going to those schools got to get good again. That's the problem. But that's but that's the problem, though. Chris is no. Why did Texas? I think it's, why did Texas and OU go to the SEC? To play. So kids straight up say they want to play in the SEC, and and, and kids want to play in the SEC. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was and a lot Sean of those hand, kids too want to yeah. leave hand, hand. Yeah, home. Yeah. A lot of them got to get out of home too, especially like the Baltimore kids. I mean, yeah. you hear the stories. A lot yeah. of them will say, "I can't go back home." Yeah. Yeah. But, no, I mean, and and that's and that's all true. But but if if we now, I guess at our ages now, Nick, especially, we probably be considered <laughs> old heads, right? But <laughs> basically, what I'm trying to say is, is that back in back when we were teenagers, back when we were growing up on this game, we had those storylines. We had those strong storylines. You already knew. Kid was athletic, can play quarterback position. He's from Virginia. Where is he wanting to go? He's wanting to go to Virginia Tech. He's wanting to go Vate, following the footsteps of a Mike Vick. He wants to play for Beamer. You got uh, Virginia was was decent, was good, but kids want to go there. Um, I talk with one of my friends all the time. One of my friends I hoop with at my JUCO, he's from that, um, that he's from Ohio, he's from Toledo, and he talks about all the time about like his cousins and everybody else that's up there from Detroit all the way to Ohio. He was like, "Hey, um, kids from like the hood, they want to go to Michigan State. They want to stay in East Lansing. They want to go to Michigan State." Where I'm from, he's like, everybody is cool with Toledo and everything else, Ohio, all the rest of that. Ohio State is the school, obviously. But he said, everybody want to go to Michigan State because it's cool to go to Michigan State. 
Yeah. But he said people go to Michigan just because they fall in love with the little vibe there, maybe a little money, different things like that. So it's it's like, you know, those kids hear the stories. Those kids want to play for, for for those schools and stuff. But in my opinion, those schools just aren't good enough now. Vitek hasn't been good, good in how talent. long? Huh? They got to get the talent, though. So that's where I thought that Mel Tucker was going to kind of catapult Michigan State when he had the good yeah. season. You know, built it off the transfer portal. Yeah, I was like, same. okay, this is when you can recruit, and we're going to see if you're going to develop the talent. But even after that great season, his recruiting class still wasn't, you know, the best, right? And they just came off mm-hmm. of what a ten win season, eleven win season, yeah. you know. Um, so Chris, Chris, you hit it though in terms of Virginia Tech. Mm-hmm. That one period. So there's two periods they of time right around the same they where they hit it, right? So Virginia Tech at that point with during the Vic years. Remember, Kevin Jones, I don't know if anybody remembers Kevin Jones, the running back. Yep. He was the number yep. one player in his class, I believe, in regardless of position. And he signed with Virginia Tech. And that was that was Michael Vick's sophomore year. He had Kevin Jones and Lee Suggs in the backfield, yeah. and they were mm-hmm. throwing to Andre Davis and all those guys. I remember they went to the Natty, uh, Vick's freshman year, against Florida State. They had DMV talent on that team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vic and like Vic today is not going to Virginia Tech. Vic is no. probably going south, right? He's going he's south going or he's Bama. going you know Midwest. <laughs> One of the two. No, I mean, right. and, and then then you got to think about like the the and then West Virginia for a short oh. period of time oh. kept people home. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pat, Ooh, um, Pat, Virginia, Pat, Pat White, Pat White, Pat White, yeah, Pat, Pat White, White, uh, Steve Slayton, and they Slayton. kept Noel Devine. They kept Noel Devine in the area. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. If you yeah. go all the way to you know the spin cycle himself one of the greatest highlight tapes of all time <laughs> Tavon came awesome. out of Tavon oh, awesome man. came out of Dun- uh, Dunbar in Baltimore yeah and what about you know what about what about like um and, and just correct me if I'm wrong falling off they no, have, I was say, correct me if I'm wrong but like when you think Vitek you think D'Angelo Hall didn't they have the Fuller brothers they yes. did yeah, yeah it's like you're talking about DBs, different kids. I mean, they, <laughs> yeah. But you got to bring them in in spades, though. I mean, you got to bring more yeah. than just a two or three. Yeah, See, that's where it's different in the SEC and, and just teams with a with a brand is that they it's can go recruit year. nationally, man. It's it's every year. That's why. You know, you see Bama at the time when when Saban was there, and you know he's kicking butt because. He's able to like stockpile five stars and just and say, "Hey, look, you play one year, you're going to the league. So just sit here and wait, kid." You know, and it's like so when one goes out, look here, man. Jalen Hurts goes out in the national championship game. They put in Tua and and win the damn thing, right? Tua gets yeah, hurt true. prior to the SEC championship game the next year, and what happens? Jalen comes in and wins the game for him. Like that's the kind of talent you're stacking. Up. And then guess what? Neither one of them, uh, you know, are there anymore. And Mac Jones comes in and wins the damn championship. Like mm-hmm. they were just stockpiling talent upon talent. And then yeah. not having to rush to play those guys, those very talented guys that if a Mac Jones or, or um, you know, Jerry Judy, Devontae Smith would have had to go to a lesser school, they won their starting, they're getting every snap, and they have no time to develop, right? Mac Jones got developed for four years. He got developed for four years, able to sit, learn, and then go be a first-round draft pick. Those schools don't, like, there's, there's no way that they can do it because they don't have the talent – to where they can let that guy sit, all right? So look at Arch Manning and Jackson Arnold, all right? Jackson Arnold got a chance Great to points. sit for a year. He got He's a five-star guy. If he doesn't go to Oklahoma, if he goes to Oklahoma State, he's starting, all right? Like last yeah, year, he, he started, started day at, one. He, he started yeah. day one. Arch Manning, if he's not behind Quinn Ewers for two years, he's he's starting somewhere his sophomore year, right? He's not starting his sophomore year. He's going to have two years of getting seasoned. Those schools like West Virginia, they don't have that. They Love don't you. have – yeah. yeah, that that opportunity to let those guys sit. They got to play them right away. And the thing is, they they got lucky with phenoms. Pat White was a freshman phenom. Yes. Michael Vick was a freshman phenom. phenom. So if you don't hit on That's a very, phenom, very point. then, you know, yeah, it can attract a lot of stuff. The, other, the only other thing I wanted to say, though, because the region conversation is really, really fun. Yeah. If you even think about the Tidewater region as we go down from southern Southern Virginia through the Carolinas, right? Ooh. And you know, kind of on that basis of Georgia between South Carolina and Georgia, that Augusta area. It gets crazy there too. It's just talent, man. 
Clemson, like Spurrier, when Spurrier went to South Carolina at the beginning of the 2010s, yeah. he was starting to take over, bro. He was he was yeah, racking up talent. Bro. He was always one quarterback away. Ty knows I've said he we talked about the Steve Spurrier. One he quarterback was racking up away. talent. He could never get it right. Who was yeah. the last it wasn't his fault. Hell, his his best quarterback. I think he is exercised some of his personal demons, and I'm not going to talk about that. But I'm just going to say he was one quarterback away <laughs> from doing a damn thing. Because I'm going to be real with y'all, Steve Spurrier was robbed because of all the defenses that he had. He had good enough defenses to go and win the SEC. Never had the Those quarterback. Those kids are still in the league. Yeah. yeah, never had the quarterback. Just think about the running backs here too with Lattimore. I yeah. mean, he had talent too. Lattimore, <laughs> Lattimore really potentially could have been a Hall of Famer if he would have never got, uh, gotten Clowney, that. Dick Clowney, Ingram, dude, this... uh, Stephon Gilmore. <laughs> yeah, these people are still in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dudes, dudes still getting checks, right? <laughs> he just couldn't that air. But then, but then our boy, uh, um, you know, the Southern preacher himself takes over at Clemson, and he started sweeping up that area. Killed but him. then he started tapping into Georgia too, yeah. and but booms up, builds up Clemson because Clemson's right there in the border too. You know, it's right yes. there on the border. All right, so you can tap the town yeah. and but you can go prom- was locking he it was, down he was locking first. It. Before, yes, yes. Before Dabo, yeah, he was popped up. He, he was doing Dabo his thing, man. Took Georgia too because Georgia got quarterbacks. They yes, yeah. He got Trevor. He, he got, got a got lot of good quarterbacks. Where did um where Juju did Lewis come coming from? out of Carrollton right now? Yeah. Oh man! What hey man, Kelly he can say what he wants about Dabo. Dabo, uh, he, I mean, he can recruit. Dude. South yeah, Carolina Dabo can recruit. What is Kelly Bryant with South Georgia Carolina? Such a hotbed. Is it because they also they're baseball rich and those kids are pretty much cross trained from when they grow? I have no oh, idea. It like seems like there. right. Yeah. Georgia quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Matthew so, Stafford. Especially the last um, twenty years, it's great. Stafford, Jake Fromm. Uh, they really produced hey, some hey, absurd. Hey, hey, oh no, no, no I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Texas. But you know, from, yeah, yeah, yeah. From yeah, Justin Fields, Trevor Justin Lawrence, Fields. Deshaun Watson. You know, all those dudes are Georgia boys. You know what I'm saying? Like talent. All and now, like I said, Juju Lewis, he reclassified. Juju Lewis reclassified, and he's a top 15 player in the nation. You know how dumb that is to reclassify and be a top 15, to be a, a top 50 player in the nation after reclassifying is stupid. Is that the kid that's committed to uh, USC? USC and right now? Bama's doing everything they can to flip him. Uh, Georgia's doing a lot to flip him. I mean, there are schools hot on the trail of this kid because he's ridiculous. He's so good. Dude, hey, what's we, up? Go ahead. Uh, I, I, James. Got a, I got a question real quick. I got a side question real quick. Just yeah. a little side mission for everybody. It's just, it literally just simple answers from everybody. Is is Lincoln Riley slowly but surely slapping all his haters in the face with this with this recruiting class that he's he's building thus far? We need to see, but here's what I will say. Have you <laughs> all done a dive into this defensive staff Lincoln Riley's put together? I, I have looked at a lot. Yeah, they, Matt he's Hintz, actually put together a legitimate Matt Ents, head coaches. coach of North Dakota State, is now their linebacker coach. Coach Henderson <laughs> coached at the uh, – at the Los Angeles Rams was just yep. working with Vaughn Miller and Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald shows up to USC's massive weekend, points at Coach Henney and says, that guy took my game to another level, just as Terry commits. Elijah Griffin is really looking. Two Georgia boys, one of them flipped from Georgia to USC, yeah, and then they got like... Terrible, right? Yeah, and then Elijah Griffin loved his visit as well. Um, I don't know if y'all saw it, Matai Tagoi? I, yeah. I, I'm so sorry if I... The kid that just committed there, that 6'4 linebacker, y'all yeah. go watch his film. Stupid. Oh, it's, it's stupid. It's so much fun. He's so good. He play, He started he, off his high school career as a cornerback, then yeah. his sophomore year moved to safety, and then once he hit 6'4", 195, they moved him to linebacker, and now they fluctuate him between inside linebacker, edge rusher, but they yeah. actually still put him back there to guard the pass. He's just like the kid, Jay, I told you to watch, and I don't know if you ever what? did, Noah Carter. Oh, no. yes, 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 Alabama. yes, 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 where he's an edge rusher who's a returning freak. punts, returning kicks, doing one-handed yep. catches. He, he's like, a freak. I did. He, he's a freak. But, but, he was, but, but does he yeah, finish, though? That's been a problem. Well, see, that's the this, thing. This Matai so, Togoi finishes. He takes heads. Yeah. No, 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 no. So, so what Chris is asking is about Riley and his mm, class yeah. and how oh, it goes. Oh, now, the other thing oh, to remember. That. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, now, that's the, re- the thing to remember here, and this is the reason why I had to turn slowly to this question. This literally is his MO. He does this every year. But the question he had the coaching is, staff to back it up. 
Well, that, that is, that the difference here is that suppose rumor has it that one of the one of the recruits said that Riley really wasn't around. It was all the defensive staff exactly. that's doing the job. That was just now, as Terry. That was just now, as Terry. Yeah, it was just as Terry. Now, mm-hmm. granted, that was also a thing that turned a lot of recruits off is that Riley wouldn't come around or be oh, visible or be around too. So, yeah, it's cool to say that this defensive staff is doing a thing and Riley's not meddling with it. But that's also been a turnoff to some of the parents and the players that he's not really he, he's not trying to be somewhat involved. But so Riley's basically I'll say this. Yeah, I'll say this on that. Yeah, I'll wrap yeah. up on this. I will judge him in August. If there's no flips by then, then I will give him props. But traditionally, everybody who is somebody flips by August. Well, well and here's <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I wouldn't judge by August. I, I wait to December. Just wait till that first signing. Uh, you gotta. Well, I, no, no, I, I, I normally signing. would, but usually most of his flips happen by August. Yeah. So that's when you typically yeah. see. Oh, okay, the class is changing. <laughs> well, here's what I will it's say. True. No, it's true. Here's what I will <laughs> say. Um, Justice Terry just scheduled his Alabama visit, and that's not alone. Like he's he's still scheduling. He's going back visits. to Georgia too. He's, he's going, going everywhere. back to Georgia. Um, if they can hold on to Justice Terry after flipping him from Georgia, that will be highly impressive. Very. Now, okay, folks, we all understand this is NIL era, right? <clears throat> to me, a lot of these flips, um, it's it's about securing the bag. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's oh, yeah, you know, yeah, you're I, right. <laughs> I hate to say it like that, but it is. But if if Lincoln is building a a no kidding good staff, what he needs to do, just like you said, Jay, he's got to be more visible around those parents. Um, he has to not only he has to not just seem like a glorified OC. Yep. Right. You have to be a head coach. You you know, you you can't be a glorified OC. You can't be a guy that I'm only going to do it my side of the ball and I'm going to let the defensive guys handle what they got to be a CEO. You got to be a CEO. Even though, you know, look, you guys know I talk a lot of stuff about OU, but BV is a defensive guy, but you see his fingerprints on the offense as well. You see, you know, bringing in you know, the right guys be OC, you know, you know, Levy leaving to go to Mississippi state, you know, so he actually promotes from within gets, you know, like, you know, it gets his guys in that he wants, but he is going to be present. And just from the pictures and some of the interviews that you hear, he is present, you know, a lot like Sark mm-hmm. is present. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I've golf. seen that with Sark as well. You that's the one it, thing you know, that's Saban different in was the same way. Regimes. Kirby, yep. Kirby's a defensive guy, but you see, he is involved. In oh, we know he's involved. Especially <laughs> high profile players. If there's a high profile player on there, they're both they're all showing up and shaking I, hands I, and they're I, calling yeah. the player. Yeah, kissing babies. high and yeah, all of that. Exactly. Uh, hey, 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 Ty knows. Ty knows. I, I've said this a long time. Georgia didn't start winning championships until uh, until Kirby stopped messing with the quarterbacks. Because jeez, <laughs> yeah. Letting that Jake Fromm trash come out there. Dang. Well, I mean, to the point though earlier that that Jay made about August, it, mm-hmm. you know, I know, I know, Neo saying recruiting in general about securing the bag. I mean, everybody's on. If your NIL collective is on point, everybody's yeah. like. To me, that's a you know net neutral, if you will. It's right. still relationships. Are you yeah. are you genuine and not just checking the box, remaining in contact, but you genuinely care. Steve Sarkeesian doesn't have to walk into a kid's living room and talk about X's and O's if he's a defensive end. But what he can talk about is, hey, dude, I got connections to get you to the league. I got connections to get you to be developed mm-hmm, properly. Mm-hmm. I got I care about you. What what do you what do you want? How can I hold you accountable to get you to where you want to be? Right? That that I don't need to be an offensive or defensive end coach to yeah. have those conversations. And to form a real relationship with somebody, yeah. Lincoln Riley, if, if, if to, to Jay's thing, here's where it's it's it was it was a lose lose. It's like okay, if you're not present, then I, I claim that as negligence. And if you are present, then what's your message? Either way, it's bad, right? Mm-hmm. So That's a great point. <laughs> now you gotta it's like, be right, look, you gotta if be I'm present. In the room, yeah. Am I making genuine connections? Yes. Yes. Period. You got to be present more than just a cookout and more than just, hey, it's bowl season now. So now we're going to travel around on the jet going to house to house. Like you got it. Because to be honest with you, that's how, um, in, in my earnest opinion, I think that's how we, what's the running back that you guys had from Texas, uh, Ty? He was uh, basically y'all starter last year. What was it? Jace. Jace. Yes. 
Jason McKellen. I mean, obviously, obviously, I mean, you're not going to turn down a home visit from um, guys from uh, Nick Saban. But, I mean, and, and a lot of people were blaming that on Bowlware, But at the same time, you sit there and look at Riley and you say, hey, you can't lose a kid like that. And then you go and have a season that you did, especially in a running game with, you know, Kennedy. I think it wasn't that Jay, wasn't that the year that Kennedy Brooks set out? Uh yep. Sermon transferred, and then we were basically with uh TJ Pleasure and um the other freshman. I mean, I, I it was Yep, 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 yeah, yep. It, it was uh, yeah, and Marcus Mage, it was it was a struggle. It was a struggle. It was no, definitely no, so a struggle. The... You don't lose kids like that. Yeah, you know, so the crazy part is, man, it's about, like you said, it's about managing relationships when it comes to these kids. Like, you know, it's not about going in and talking exes and those, just like Steven said, but it's how do you use those 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 numbers in your iPhone to match them up with the players? You know, I'm going to talk about Texas because I know Texas, but, you know, Sark was the OC with Dan Quinn, um, right? Uh, so he knows Dan Quinn very well, right? Uh, so look who is kind of mentoring Colin Simmons right now. It's a guy Parsons. that was, it's Michael Parsons. He was coached by Dan Quinn for the, you know, like, like the past three years. And they he is kind of like the mentor. Immediately. He got that in and it wasn't just with Michael Parsons. And I don't know this for a fact, but you know, I'm gonna put this out there. Uh, Texas is DC, which is PK met with Dan Quinn. What was it? Two years ago, Steven. And to yeah. me, I, I think that was all about how to weaponize over Sean, right? And how to get him all over the field. Like the Cowboys have gotten Michael Parsons, you know, like all over the field. How does that translate? It translates very well because over Sean gets drafted by who? The Cowboys, who was Dan Quinn was the DC at that time, right? So it's about those connections, making sure that you get those kids in front of the right players, get them in front of the right coaching staff because it could change your life. A lot of people didn't think that Overshawn would get drafted that high. He got drafted high to the Cowboys, and I think that was probably because of the relationship that between Steve Sarkeesian, PK, and also Dan Quinn, all right? Uh, knowing how to weaponize them because they were probably very familiar with him, and they trusted I, I, their valuation of those coaches. That kid's talented, dude. That kid's no, talented. No, he, he's talented. No, <laughs> that no, he's, kid's talented. No, no, he's, he's very talented. Yeah. But he was, do you go well, with the we, talent that we you know or the talent that LSU, you don't know? Brother. Huh? We were neck and neck with LSU for Colin. Sip. That that was a very yeah, yeah that was a battle. Recruitment. Yeah, that really was, was a battle. But that I was wanted a battle. to get uh, you know to to but to the to the uh, uh, relationship piece. Nick Saban is a master at this. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right, because Jalen Milrow was. I remember. I forgot what camp it was, and Saban is present. They were they were in. This is between the Texas stuff before Quinn Ewers and all that. But he pulls out his phone, and this is right around the time. I think Jalen Hurts was at, as at, was at OU, or getting ready, and he FaceTimes Jalen Hurts and puts Jalen Hurts on the phone with Jalen Milrow. Right? Even yeah. though he's not at his school anymore. Yeah. And he's like, this is where you want to be, and why. And and the fact, and what Jillian, I remember Jalen Milrow, somebody saying this, he was like, Dude, the fact that y'all are still talking like that and you were still close, he was like, yeah, our relationship goes way beyond football. Saban like loves relationship. Hurts. Yeah, he's, he's, he's such a great ambassador for the school. And, and not just the school, he is exactly what you want in a player, man, is when things don't go your way, he took a tell and leave. All right? He didn't. He finished. He got his degree. And when his number was called upon again to come and win an SEC championship game, he came and did it. All right? He did it. All right? And then... Yeah, he he's the epitome of of a team player, and it's it's showing it's it's been very fruitful for him in the league. You know, he goes to a great situation by and, two programs. Yes, and, yeah, rightfully so. And it's it's yeah. so funny because whenever he was transferring, the original destination for Hertz wasn't, as far as Maryland, I remember, the story Maryland was I think was going to be somewhere like that. And Nick Saban looked at him and said, "Hey, man." Who's putting out the best quarterbacks right now? And Jalen Hurts said, well, uh, Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley. He says, well, then we're going to get you to Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're, that's where you, if you want to go there, that's where we're going to get you. And it, it all worked out. I mean, J Jalen is just, you know, I was talking about this the other day, and then I'm a, unfortunately have to, Bama, as a Bama fan, we've been very lucky. Like, speaking of the talent of the quarterbacks they've had, that's one thing. 
But when you look at like, and Mac, Mac's a great dude, but like, when you look at Tua, Jalen Hurts, Bryce, and now Jalen Milrow, you're not only talking about one percent athletes; you're probably talking about one percent human beings too. Yeah, yeah. Great and character. as a Bama fan, I can't tell you like how easy it is to root for Jalen Milrow. I, I mean, when when Saban leaves, for him to know, hey, this could go one way or the other. Like this could get real ugly real fast. To walk in, Mal Moore turned to the reporters and said, "I'm not going anywhere." Roll Tide. If, if there's an Alabama fan that questions him after that, send them my way because we'll have a conversation. I mean, what a leader. And, and it's just very blessed, right? And I'm not saying that Bama fans are alone in that. It's just that run of quarterbacks they had. What what human beings? I mean, it's insane. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see, um, you know, how Kalen kind of kind of picks it up, you know, going forward. Um Excited. He has some, he, look, man, he has some really good ones, though, man. He's had, Those uh, relationships, you know, too, in the yeah. transfer portal era matter more than ever. Oh, yes. More we've than ever. That, yes. We've learned that from Steve Sarkeesian on the Texas side. How many guys, we were their second choice, and then mm-hmm. a year later or two years later. Great point. We were able to, you know, because the relationship was never broken. And, and Sark's, Sark's a great relationship builder. Yeah, hey. Sark's like, I don't burn bridges. No, he doesn't. Hey, no. look at Worthy. You know, Texas exactly. was not his second choice, but Sark was his Sark second was his choice. Second cho- <laughs> and so that's when you get those relationships in there, man. And you're able to, you know, hey, things ain't going right. Come on down. All right, Ty, see you, brother. Later, guys. I'll see y'all next week. Yeah, man. And so, yeah, that's when you forge those those bonds, man. And he ends up getting worthy and, you know, and then worthy's worthy, right? And, you know, breaks the 40 yard dash record in the combine and we're going to see where he gets drafted this year, but it's all about relationships, man. All about relationships. What you laughing at, man? What you laughing at, Chris? I'm not laughing at nothing, you know? Me, look, <laughs> I, Steve, me and Steven had a great, great <laughs> podcast the other day. We did. Uh, basketball podcast, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm on good terms with Texas guys right now, so I'm gonna leave it there. I'm, I mean, shout out don't to keep Chris. my comments had, to uh, myself until the fall. He had South Carolina going to the Final Four, so that one didn't shake out for the men. <laughs> uh, we, we were you were correct on the women's side, uh, but for the men's, you know, I, I, I thought you were out of pocket then, brother. But you know what? Hey, 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 hey! hey. I picked you Texas know. right though. NC State made it. Yeah, NC State. You were very impressive. You, you did technically. You 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 were you had somebody in that region. You just had the wrong Carolina. Oh yeah, the wrong. That, yeah, that's all good, man. If you would have looked like a genius, if you had taken NC State, where's Oklahoma? Uh, yeah, at? I would have. I would have. Where's Oklahoma? At? They make it. Uh, don't we ain't even talking about Oklahoma I mean, right I, now. We're trying to bro, fill the team. Really we're trying to fill the portal. Team. <laughs> can we can we touch on that for a second before What's we, that? we tie off? So McCollum's in the portal. Um, what's Suarez is gone. Uzan, Suarez Usman is, gone. Is, is in the portal. Usman is in the portal. Huli is in the, in the portal. portal. Uh, oh, is Oway in the portal too? Is yeah. Oh, so, yeah. You guys got four players in the portal in basketball? No, 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 no. Look, okay, so you got Usman. Um, you got McCollum. You got Hughley. you forgetting about. And then you also got uh, uh, o- Oway. Okay. Always in the portal. Yeah, so that is four. Yeah, and then oh, Soares wow. is. I think Soares is gone as a is senior. Is this by design? What's going on? Why is why is everybody in the portal? I mean, if you let the little birdies around uh, town tell you what's going on, is that a lot of people wasn't really gelling with uh, the head ball coach. But mm. I really don't know. Can't really confirm too much. It's just the fact that it seems that he's just blowing up, and I I think that. I like Porter Moser. I really like Porter Moser. I think Porter Moser is a good coach. I think he's a really good coach. I agree. He, he just has a work. Coach. He is. He just hasn't worked out here at OU. And now, to put it in my uncle's terms, the fact that you're on year four and basically having to start from scratch again. Yeah. He's a Midwest <laughs> coach. He needs to be in that Chicago, that Illinois, Chicago area. So I yeah. think it's going to work long term at OU. Because That's of- a shock of smart, man. I was happy to see yeah. him go as far as he can go this year. It's Ooh, just yeah. not your that. That's my Shaka had a team, man. It just matches. Yeah. But no, I mean what you're what you're saying though, Stephen is it's. I mean it's true. I mean I just think that this has been a 
a bad marriage. And I think eventually it's going to force Castiglione to do something that he doesn't normally do. And that's fire a coach, mm-hmm. you know, and find a new, I mean, I, and, and, and to be honest with you, to be quite frank with you, our coach is sitting on the bench over there at uh, at Houston. They should have hired uh, Kellen Sampson to begin with. I know they've been his first time, but I think that he's ready for that job. And I also think that his connections to Houston alone could change this program, could help this program get back to kind of some of that national notoriety that they've had here in spurts. But it's just, I, I think that's that's the guy that I would want to see mm-hmm. um, be in a job. But I mean, I'm gonna give Porter one more one more chance. Obviously, he got some one more chance, but it's tough, man. It's definitely tough because he's in year four, having to basically start over start all over again. again. Yeah, one for the I fourth will say about time. OU, one thing I will say about OU with their coaches, they are not afraid to go out and get a guy who has never been a head coach. You yeah. guys did it with, with with Stoops, Lincoln Riley, now BV. It's getting ahead of the curve um, as far as coaching talent. A lot of NFL teams won't even do it, right? I look at my yeah. Cowboys, you know, and I see my Cowboys. They kind of like, huh? They never do it. They'll never they, put – Nope, nope. Be a first time they never do it. They just retread old names, right? But you see a guy like – Sean McVay come out and, and, and be young and do great things. And, uh, um, you know, a Shanahan and the guy down in Miami, like those are innovative guys that do outstanding things. But Jerry Jones is so against being innovative and he wants yeah. to retread common names that he's used to. Oklahoma is, I will give you guys a credit. You guys ain't afraid to step on that ledge and go get somebody who you might think is an up and comer or who might not have the experience, but has, the knack uh, to do what you wanted to do in the conference. And, and you see, you see, well, she, I mean, she had experience because she was at, at Drake, but you see the, the uh, basically the benefits that came from the hire of the women's head coach. Mm-hmm. And um, OU's women basketball was, I mean, was all but dead for a while. And now look yeah. at it, you know, yeah. back to back, Big 12 conference champions, you know, going pretty far uh in the um in the, in the tournament as well the ncaa tournament so i mean you're looking at the revitalization of that program but this men's program right now i'm not going to say that it's down in the dumps you're not down in the dumps when you get 20 wins it doesn't matter um how the season went you got 20 wins i'll give porter that and the i big mean this 12 was the big 12 tough man it's a gauntlet and big 12 is tough yeah i mean the big 12 is tough but just, I, I mean, it, it's just one of those things where you get those those guys, your key guys, yeah, are transferring. If you lose Jalen Moore, I mean, it's all but. I mean, you might as well go ahead and write this season off as a tax write off because it's, it's not going to be anything else. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm being this. brutally honest. I, I do want to touch on Texas real quick before we bounce. Back yeah. From a basketball perspective. Because we were in that boat last year, and it was really frustrating because I felt like it ended up costing us Ron Holland Ron Holland, yep. coming into Texas and and having that prep that prep talent to go along with the veterans because guys thought they were NBA ready and all this type of stuff and yeah. ended up learning the truth and coming back to school. So you can't get guys back out of the portal. Um, yeah. We had some guys in there, too, that ended up reworking itself back. But, Chris, I told you. We were a Jekyll High basketball team. I'm not mad now that I've had some time to, to to breathe. I'm really not mad. Like, I'm glad that we won the game we were supposed to win. Yeah. Right? We were supposed to win our first round game. RT got that done. You know, hey, we had a chance to beat Tennessee right there, right? Oh, two, you know, right down there. two. We played horrible and still well, on We played really bad game. basketball, man. We continue. We turned the basketball over. We 18 turnovers, right? Yeah. Just. Rick and, Barnes, and, and baby. Un, we could not inbound the basketball for it whatever reason. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> it was bad, I, but I told dude. you that that was that was Texas hoops. Uh, but 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 there's a new day coming because Trey Johnson last night in the McDonald's All American game bet the best prep score. When I say prep, mm-hmm. I'm talking about high school level prep score coming to Texas since Kevin Durant was on campus. Let that me kid let me ask you this question. Up. And I'm excited. Is, uh, is Hunter gone? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My fault. No, what did you say? You said, is Hunter gone? Yeah. As of right now, he has not made a decision on anything. He can come back. Uh, 
Yeah, um, is Dylan Mitchell going anywhere or is he staying? Same, he hadn't made a decision yet either. I told you, I he's, he's your best back. NBA he prospect. Should he should, he needs to come back, but he's your best NBA prospect. Daisu, is Daisu, uh, is he gone? He's gone. He's gone, right? He ain't no airsability, right? That yeah. hurts. Cunningham, Dylan. Cunningham's Dissou. coming back, isn't he? No, no, no. He's, he's oh, out, it's he's April Fool's. That's April Fool's. Yeah, that's right. April Fool's yesterday. He did. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So Cunningham, Dylan Dessou, Max Abesness, IT yeah. Horton, those guys are out of eligibility. Y'all yeah, basically true. started from scratch too, bro. And then no, not really, not really. Chris, now Chris Johnson hit the portal. Who's a, who's our freshman last year? But uh-huh. we have a bigger prep class coming in. We have Nick Cody coming in. Okay. Um, Trey John, like we have, we have some real actual prep talent coming hey, in. Dude, Ch- we could Chindle use Weaver's going to be a leader. On this hey, team. do you want to hear a hot take on him? Who on Weaver? You want to hear a hot take? I got a hot take. And all you fans are going to eat me up about this, but I'm going to say this right here. I think Kendall Weaver could be a 16 to 18 point score next year. I think that if he if he takes the proper. Shot. If he takes the steps this summer, you can get us. You can get a jump shot in the summer if he works you on can. this mid-range game, it's, mm-hmm. especially with how active he is and how he can play both ends of the floor. He's a dog at that pace. There's no reason why he couldn't average fifteen to eighteen points a game. Hey, Weaver, I'm just, hey, I'm being real. I with love you. Weaver's heart, man. Uh, dude, is man. If Competes. you had a team, a 12, 15 people with that effort every play. You don't yeah. even need to have the most talented team. You're going to out-hustle I, so many teams. I, I love his game. and He's, he, he's like probably I said, my favorite hey, guy on the team. My hot take, I think that – I'm, I'm going to lower it because I think 18 is a lofty goal. I would say somewhere between – I would say 15 points per game. He, sh- he should average at least 15. He's such, because a, there's he's no- such a defensive guy, That's though, right? That's my thing. That's my he thing. Reminds my value me. is on the defensive yeah. side. And Steven, he's he got use on the defense, but why? Why can't he take make that next step? Why can't he because take that next step don't. and be that guy? And then he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna expend honest. he's gonna expend so much energy on defense. He reminds me of a guy like a Royale Ivy that was a defensive mm-hmm. juggernaut and specialized guy when he was at Texas, and he carved out a nice little niche in the NBA for a while. He's, he's got to be a defense. three and D guy if he's going to be out there on the court next year. He yeah. can't. He can't just That's be true. that. What's his three point body? percentage, man? I, I didn't get a chance. It to was see. really poor this year. Was it? It was. Poor. It, he was. He wasn't looking for a shot. Well, he didn't shoot. He didn't shoot with confidence, and he has an inconsistent. Yeah. He has inconsistent mechanics. It can. It, it can improve. The if, thing with yeah. Weaver, his his percentage at UTA wasn't bad, but when he got to Texas, he he didn't shoot the three well and then eventually he stopped taking the threes and would put the ball on the floor and go to the cup yeah let me they've got it he's got to develop that element if he's if he just gets to a serviceable level Ooh. from a three-point shooting per- standpoint i'm cool with that because that opens up the floor for everything else mm-hmm. trey johnson's going to be your scorer anyway that's going to be was... the guy that's going to come in and take abe's miss Look. Hell no. Hell he was, no. He was 20, because he was Terry... 23.7% from three point this year. No, no, 44, Chris. no, 40 the year before. Uh, but Terry, 20, Terry is, Terry is going to go out there and get a bunch of kids from the portal. He is too dependent on his veteran guys. I haven't seen him really put that much stock in, into any young guys. He will well, give you the great only, light. He's though. only been the coach for a year and a half, number one. And we built, we did build out, we did build out for w- the portal team we had that Chris Beard put together that was uh, that was built for that year. That prep class that Terry had with AJ Johnson and Ron Holland, they were going to build around Ron Holland. And, and Trust Ron me Bolton. on that if he had Bolton. come to Texas. Yeah. Terry had to pivot when those dudes went to the G- one went to the NBL, the other one went to the G League. By the way, yeah. for those who were listening, G League Ignite, that's toast. It's toast. So you don't man. have to worry about kids hopping over there after they already signed with your school and people flirting with them. So that's fine. But we haven't, the reason why you haven't seen that is because Rodney Terry hasn't even gotten a chance to work with a kid like this. Trey Johnson is one of the top five players in the class, and he's probably the best pure scorer in the class. But you see this at Baylor with like a Jacoby Walter. Every year, Baylor's had a phenomenal freshman guard. Keontae yeah. George the year before. Those we just have not had that 
that level of player. But now and, we and, do. And, ba- and Baylor's so also going to have kid- to build around Trey Johnson. There's no yeah. ifs, ands, or buts around yeah. it. If you can't work with Trey Johnson, then you're not a. Then you can't be my coach. Like, period. <laughs> yeah, That's just is cold, is is he is t- well. I don't know because I don't know how many years he signed his contract for. But is Terry on his? Is he on the hot seat if he has another up and down season like he did this year? If it's like this year, yes. But his roster, the problem he had last year, again, was the guys that jumped to the NBA um, that were not supposed to. And he had no team for like two months. It's true. It was like Brock Cunningham yeah. <laughs> and, Without- and, and the walk-ons. Get Max and was like found money at the end. It was Max it was, was found money at the end. At the end, man, it was, yeah, he he was dealt a bad hand, uh, with both his top recruits leaving. I, it, it, it was it just it's it's crazy. You know they have a base now to start from. Yeah, Weaver, Cedric, you know some there's guys there on that roster right now that at least have played. And yeah. then you throw in a Trey Johnson in there and Cam in there too as well. Three really good high school, three guys that should play. Yeah. Now I can now I can be way more strategic in the portal if I'm Rodney Terry. He got to the point in the portal. Uh, Nina can correct me if I'm wrong, where we couldn't say no to people. Yeah. Because <laughs> we yeah. needed the bodies. We need the bodies, bro. This <laughs> dude. So you think about the class right here, man. Uh, he's got three national top fifty players coming in next year. You know, so. You're looking at that happening, uh, you know, plus the talent that he he has on the team already. Like you said, he's got to go get some guys in the portal. Uh, what does Mitchell do? Does he come back for another year? I think probably should, right? Um, and if that hey, happens, hey, you're hey, looking Nick, at a – what's up? Nick, I told I told Steve what I said. Yeah, he did, he's the uh, T-Move team, team version of Kelly Uber. <laughs> I said he's a knockoff Kelly Oubre. You want to talk about somebody? <laughs> he won't with a shoot. Jump shot. He won't do anything. Look, when it comes to basketball, if y'all want to hear somebody critical and really break that game down, come listen to me because I will tell you. When I watch him, I'm like, dude, you the best NBA. You're the NBA prospect on this team. You're the best NBA prospect that Texas has. But you don't play like it. You don't have a motor. You, you're good in spurts you're not consistent you don't look for your shot you don't do any of those things and they run a lot they run sets where you can get a lot of easy buckets just off of athleticism brother but the motor is not there how can we continue to say that somebody and i'm not trying to because he improved a lot this year because his freshman year he was not playable to me yeah so he's he went to hey a guy that can get us eight to ten rebounds he guarded really well he because he was way more aggressive in transition he yeah. was aggressive on the offensive rebounding and putbacks, but you're not an NBA player to me. If I pass you the ball ten feet away from the basket, and you can't do anything. That's unacceptable. That's you can't play at the next level if if you don't even have a floater, a jump hook, or any type of fall. Now he started to develop like a little fall away jumper. Yeah. That needs to be something where you just automatically go to it if you're that type of player. Yeah. Like there's no excuse, really. At this He's level like, of I mean, <laughs> you can even call him a poor man's version of Josh Smith. He just can't shoot. Like, he, or he, he's not a willing shooter. He doesn't do. I, I, Steven, that's what I'm trying to say. Like for for Kendall Carter, if, if or Weaver, if I'm if I'm the head coach of Texas, right? And hey, God forbid, I know y'all don't want that, but if I'm the head coach of Texas basketball team. I'm telling you now, you're on my rock. You're on, you're one of my coaches, and me and you are in a meeting. Me, you and Nick are in a meeting. I'm telling you right now, Ken Weaver ain't touching the damn court if he can't be a three and D guy. And I mean, he's got to be shooting somewhere between 36 and 40 percent from the three point line. I expect that. Mitchell, Mitchell might as well transfer because he's not. I, I'm not Kansas. I'm they, not running some offense that's that going right to now. make him obsolete. I'm running stuff through him. I'm running sets for him. I'm giving him opportunities. If I give him a ball ten times right a game, now, I need I need him to score at least eight. I, I'm just being honest, man. I'm with you. These brothers know their deficiencies. We can, I mean, we can. Talk <laughs> I know we yeah. gotta go, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. I gotta go yeah, too. But good. one thing I will say, we got to stop putting it on these kids to where 
they're supposed to come to school and then after one year you're supposed to go to the league. Sometimes it takes other players a little bit longer to develop That's than true. it would. There's you know, so maybe that. his maybe maybe his third year is this year, right? You know, it's just so we'll see. We'll see. We are in a very microwave, you know, atmosphere now where Look at you want to put a kid four. in there for one year and say go to the league and be done. And it is what it is. But hopefully next year it'll be better. But it is been an, it's been an hour and a half. So it's yeah, yeah, 40. we'll go ahead and go. All right, man. Appreciate it. I'll, I'll see y'all next week.